Hello, welcome to my home. If you're new here, my name is Karen. I want to share with you the lie that anxiety told me this morning. This morning, anxiety said, you don't have enough time. You're going to get too tired before you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. You're behind. Your house is a mess. That one might be true. No, it's really not too true. Anyway, there's a ton to do, you know. Do you, do you recognize that voice? Do you have that voice? Well, today, and, and this is when it hit, I was trying to write a to-do list and I was thinking to myself, anxiety said, you keep writing these lists, but you can't get through them. You write too much. You've already failed because you're not good at writing a list because you don't know your own bandwidth. That may or may not be true, but I can get through what I want, what I can get through, right? I can do what I need to do. And then guess what's next? Next, there's another empty page and I can take whatever didn't happen today and put it on tomorrow. So I thought, okay, it's time to calm down. So what do we need to do first? We need to think about what is for dinner. And I had actually done this before I wrote this, but this is the switch I made. I went to my freezer. I went to my refrigerator, I went to my pantry. In the freezer, I saw I had a pretty big steak, almost two pounds, a pound and three quarters. I went to the refrigerator and I saw, okay, I have some bell peppers that need to get used up. I have some onion, half an onion, and another half, you know, half of a yellow, I had half of a red. And then I went to the pantry, opened the pantry. Oh look, I have some corn tortillas. So what did that tell me? Fajitas, hello, fajitas. But I really do want to get a lot done. I know I'm gonna be tired at the end of the day, so I thought, crockpot fajitas. So I went to Pinterest and I typed in crockpot fajitas, which really, honestly, I'm looking at recipes, I'm like, oh, okay, you just throw the fajita stuff in, you know, the steak, the onion, the peppers, and the, seasoning right and I actually saw one that includes sauce I thought well that might be good since it's going to be sitting in my crock pot all day and you know throw it in the crock pot you have yourself a heaters at supper and then I don't even have to worry about being too tired to make dinner at the end of the day I'll ask someone to throw rice on because I know my girls love it if they can have rice with their supper even you know I'm going to throw mine in a sh I have a low carb shell that's how it's going to work right so and then it's like okay I start to calm down knowing I have supper taken care of and whatever my family is going to need from me and I think I don't have any avocados we usually like to have guacamole with literally everything oh my tie's gone anyway so I think okay if I have time I'll get to the store and get avocados and if I don't I don't and we'll live without avocados we have sour cream we'll be fine right so just be mindful of when you hear that voice in your head, is the voice telling you the truth? And even if it is the truth, is it a truth you can overcome, right? And can you take something big and put it in smaller bites? So one of the problems I have also with my to-do list is I'll put things on the to-do list, but I'm not thinking, oh, I got to empty the dishwasher or, you know, some of those morning things. And sometimes those can zap me. I'm just going to take it one step at a time, and I hope that you take it one step at a time with me. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to defrost the steak, clean the kitchen from last night, get the crock pot out, and get dinner in the crock pot. Then we're going to move on to the next thing and the next thing, and it's going to be okay. We're going to be further at the end of the day than we were at the beginning of the day. And isn't that the goal anyway? And for those of you who don't feel well and are on the couch or in bed sick, here's what I hope for you. Take it as self-care. Take it at read a good book, watch a good show, uh, listen to a podcast, listen to some YouTube videos, learn a skill. Be relaxed as you watch me work. Just do something about seeing other people work that I honestly find relaxing. So watch this video and then think about what are some skills you might like to learn. You can watch videos on that. You can listen to podcasts, self-improvement podcasts. There's so much you can do. It's okay if you're laid up. I mean, it's not okay because it's no fun. But it's okay in the sense of you do not have, your worth is not based on whether you can run around like a chicken with your head cut off, like somebody who has put the speed at times two or times four on the internet. It's, it's literally okay. So I love you all so much. Please don't be hard on yourselves. So in case you're wondering, this is what I have kind of so far. 
on my to-do list. See that? That's a whole video in itself. That's kind of a whole day in itself, but I wanted to remember it while I was thinking about it, so I wrote it down. You notice the penmanship don't even the same. <laughs> All right, so here is some beef that I had gotten on sale. It was marked down because it was getting older, so I threw it right in the freezer until I figured out what to do with it, and today is that day. This is where I'm starting on this morning with a messy kitchen. This is happening more often than not. And I'll just explain by saying the dynamics in my family have changed. And so it's just where we are right now. And it's okay. It's just, I could be upset about it or I could just take care of it. So what I wanted to do actually while I take care of these dishes is share with you the passage from the Bible that I go to whenever I'm anxious. And when I say I go to it, I mean like, for the last 30 plus years, I go to it. It is Philippians chapter four in the New Testament, starting with verse four. And it says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have heard or received from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So... One thing I want you to notice, I've heard a lot of sermons from verse six, and it makes you feel bad that you're anxious because it says it's clearly a command. Do not be anxious. And I think, well, when you stop in the middle of a sentence, this is what happens. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In my opinion, what it's saying there is don't just sit in your anxiety what could you do about it? And what the do is the pray about it, petition the Lord, tell God what is going on with thanksgiving, finding things to be thankful for, presenting your requests of, to God. So thankfulness is definitely important here. You know, finding things to be thankful for. Even non-Christians today are telling you to keep a thankful journey journal as a way to fight anxiety and as a way to live a more joyful life. But also telling God about it, praying about it is also helpful. So we're not pretending the problem's not there. We're praying about it. We've done all we can do. We've prayed about it. We've given it to God. And now what do we do? Now look at verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true. So finally, after all of that, right, now we're going to repackage our mind. It's not enough to say, I'm going to refuse to think about this thing, because all we do is leave ourselves with an empty mind and those thoughts creep back in. We're going to intentionally think what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about such things. You know, I remember my mom saying to me when I was a kid, you know, think about something nice. Think, put some nice thoughts in your head. And that's basically what this is saying is, you know, it's, a, it's not enough to stop doing something, right? You have to replace the action. You don't just put something off. You got to put it on. If you empty a room, all you've done is ended up with an empty room. What are you going to fill it with? And our mind is the same thing. So we need to fill it with good thoughts. And honestly, sometimes it's putting something in your ears, a podcast, the Bible. version is completely free and there's audio Bible in it. Uh, some good audio books, you know, fill your mind. If you can't think good thoughts, fill your mind with good thoughts by putting some audio in the room or in your ears. Worship music is, I should have said that first, absolutely huge and key is to fill your mind, fill your mouth with songs of praise and worship, focusing on how God is going to get you through. So th this is what we're doing, right? We're not just going to let anxiety have its way. There can't be no light If darkness don't exist He never left my sight 
He showed me the way out of all the storms raging at the sea. He gave me back my life. I owe him everything. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the name of the Lord forever and always. I rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the name of the Lord always. He carried me to shore, held me through the pain. He loved me at my worst. I thank him every day. I will put him first, cause he did that for me. He sacrificed himself so I could find my peace. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. joy to his name every single day cause he never left our sight he showed us the way can't be no light if darkness don't exist he never left my side he showed me the way i just found that song it was actually on kimmy cope's last video and i loved it so much it just seemed to fit right there and so i didn't want to interrupt it but you notice i wiped down my appliances and if you were here for a video a couple of days ago that was on my list oh it was when I cleaned the bathroom tub a couple days ago so the appliances was on my list that day and I knew I wasn't going to have time and I said well it's just going to have to wait and it's going to bug me so I know I'll get to it which is true <laughs> it did have to wait it did bug me and I got to it and I got to it today. So that felt super good. And now I'm just getting everything cut up and thrown into the crock pot. I also found these green onions that really needed to be used. So I thought I'm going to throw them in. It's not going to affect flavor and it didn't. If anything, maybe it added to it. So that was good too. This is kind of like a clean out your fridge recipe. As I'm getting everything cut up here, I just have to share with you that I just heard this crying outside my door. And so I had to let Leo into my room while I do the voiceover. Now he's sitting in my lap, a little bit frustrated because to be perfectly honest, he wants my chair. He wants to look out the window. I put him on the bed so he could see out the other window, but that was not good enough. So <laughs> as I am getting this meal prepared, first, let me just confess to you that at the end of this video, at the end of my day, which actually was like 3.30 in the afternoon, I was so tired. I completely forgot to show you what the recipe looked like. I'm so sorry. If there's anything I need to get straight, I need to like make myself a note and, and tape it to the fan over the oven that says, 
take an after picture of the food. But I thought I'm not going to not share it with you just because I was a crappy YouTuber today. <laughs> I'm going to share it with you anyway, because if you picture what a saucy fajita looks like, that's what it looked like. So, so many recipes. I know in my grandmother's day and, I rem and my mother too, so many recipes were more about what do you have in the pantry, not so much about the recipe. So this is a good one too. Any odds and end onions that you have lying around in the refrigerator, green onions, any bell peppers, it doesn't matter what color they are that you have lying around, toss in that crock pot. It doesn't matter if it's chicken or if it's beef or if it's pork, cut it up toss it in the crock pot. Trust me, I bet even hamburger would work just fine for this. So it's whatever you have. And I was going to switch over to Valentine's Day meals after I did the Super Bowl meals. But I really think what would be more beneficial for all of us is if I really, and I probably will do like maybe one day of some heart-shaped ideas. But I think um, what would be more beneficial is if I did more meals that were budget-friendly because I just feel like it doesn't matter where you are in the world. And I know we have elections coming up here in the United States and they're going to blame the sitting president for where we are economically, where prices are. But from being on YouTube, I know it's not just the United States. It's everywhere. And whether or not I like the sitting president isn't the point. The point is it is a shame that they take the blame for things that the whole world is struggling with, you know, Do, but I don't get political here. That's the deepest you'll ever see me get. Also, if you notice the brown edges on this steak, it's because part of it got cooked in the microwave. It's just one of the hazards of putting your meat in the microwave to defrost. And I'm also trimming off some of the fat, not all of it, but some of it. It's going to render out. In fact, this shrunk quite a bit. And it was a good thing. I had a couple kids who weren't home for dinner because it really shrunk so much. I might not have had enough or we would have had to supplement. So that is something to be keeping track of. But what I was saying is, you know, so much of the recipes of the past were really based on what you had in the pantry, like shepherd's pie. I always used to put one can of cream corn and then some regular kernel corn in my shepherd's pie. My grandmother put whatever vegetable she had on hand. She was not worried about it. It was something to do with leftover mashed potatoes and leftover vegetables. The recipe called for two pounds of flank or ribeye steak. I used whatever steak I had on hand. I also would use whatever amount of steak uh, would feed my family. So then to that, I was supposed to add one to two bell peppers, one onion, and now that was two cups of marinara tomato sauce. I did a quarter cup of beef broth. And I will say from experience, if all you had was chicken broth or vegetable broth, use it, especially if it's vegetable broth. And then two tablespoons of oil. I tend to use avocado oil, but you just use whatever oil you have. Now it calls for two tablespoons of fajita seasoning. So if you have fajita seasoning in the house, you can go ahead and use that. I did not. So then I thought, okay, I'm going to go back to Pinterest. I'm going to look up fajita seasoning. It turned out to be homemade taco seasoning without the cumin. So if you have a recipe, you could use that but it was one tablespoon of chili powder. And then it was two teaspoons of paprika. I go to the pantry and or my cupboard, and this is how much paprika is left, none. Somebody put an empty thing of paprika in the cupboard. So paprika did not hit this recipe. Then it's two teaspoons of oregano. And correct me if I'm wrong, in ye olden days, was oregano in every Mexican recipe? For some reason, I always saw it as an Italian herb. It called for one teaspoon of kosher salt. Now, I would love someone to tell me what is the difference in taste between kosher salt, sea salt, and table salt. This happens to be sea salt because it's what I have. So using what I have is always easier than running to the store. <laughs> Then it's a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and then we're going to do a half teaspoon of garlic powder. And since there's onions in it, and I'm adding onion powder, I thought, okay, well, even though there is garlic powder in it, I want to add garlic because we are a garlic family. It's so funny. I can remember when I first started using garlic, 
just one clove seemed overwhelming to me. And now it is just a dump fest. Once you start using garlic, it's almost addictive. But hey, it is cold, flu, and other pandemic seasons. So get yourself some garlic and dump it on in. <laughs> the middle or to the left, Robin? <laughs> to the left. Okay. So you have off and then low. Low. Okay. Yeah. Then high and then low. All right. So because it's only 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to put it on low. And then I'll check it at like 3 and make any adjustments I need to make. It'll either go on warm probably or it'll go on high and I don't feel like it's cooked enough but I don't want the peppers to disappear. It's break time. Me and Leo <laughs> are having a break. I'm going to read my book. He's going to nap. Then I'm going to eat some cauliflower pizza for lunch and get back to it. You know, I've talked before in other videos about mixing quiet activities with active activities if you don't have the bandwidth to get a lot done, but there actually comes a time and I'm sure you're aware of it. And so I want to make sure I'm not discouraging people without advice because there comes a time like the way I'm feeling now that I just don't even have the bandwidth to do a quiet activity. Like I do need to do my grocery order because I really want to get the grocery order in on Fridays. Lately, if I do it Friday morning, I don't get it till Friday night. But anyway, so I really want to do the meal plan grocery order and that would be a quiet activity, but my brain just feels kind of muddled and I just need it to be calm. So I'm going to read and have something to eat because that helps me get my mind back. So just because I give you that advice to mix quiet with active, there does come a time where you need to just do something completely relaxing. And I hope you're giving yourself permission to take Ball breaks. Right, Leo? Ball breaks. Just like I am shopping Zion, no, making me stronger, calling me higher. When we come together, just like I am shopping Zion, making me stronger, calling us higher. When we're helping each other, we're growing together. All right, let's see how this looks. I'm going to stir it around. It sure smells good. The next thing that I really want to do is to get my grocery order finalized. I know I'm meeting friends tomorrow for lunch. Super excited about that. So I'm going to have it delivered right at 9. Well, it says not between 9 and 10 a.m., which means 10. <laughs> I never get it on the early side of that ever. Now, I don't really know. I don't have a great list. Oh, I do have some things here. But I do know there's this one dip. We do all, I will make it and show it on the channel. I think I've shown it before. It's called Life Affirming Nacho Dip and it's from the Oh How She Glows Cookbook by Angela Lydon. It's a great, you like this is vegan nacho dip. You would never know that it doesn't have cheese in it. It's so good. It has cashews, peeled and chopped carrots, nutritional yeast, lemon juice, garlic, salt, chili powder, onion powder, cayenne pepper, which I leave out because of me, marinara sauce, onions, spinach, then corn chips, and green onions. It is so good because the nutritional yeast with the cashews give you that cheesy, rich feel, and it is a huge hit in my whole house. So I need it's raw cashews, too. So I need to make sure I get me some cashews, one cup of raw cashews. So I'm going to choose the cheaper one, $11.98 a pound. Holy camoly. And that's eight ounces, so that's the cup. $6 just for the one cup of cashews. I know I have nutritional yeast, lemon juice, garlic, salt, chili powder, onion powder, 
Um, marinara, I have that. I have onions. I need to have spinach. Fresh spinach is what I like to use. I do have frozen spinach. Roughly chopped. Eh, I'll get some spinach. So fresh spinach. And I always get baby spinach. It's easier to deal with. Keep showing up. Whichever's cheaper. So looks like five three twenty no that's kale. Five ninety eight a pound is the cheapest. Then the corn chips. There's these cochil corn chips we really like. Let's see if I can get them to come up. I usually oh it came up. Usually I can't get it to come up. They're super thin, so good in this. All right, I got green onions. I have everything else. Wow, that's not bad at all. So I know I'm gonna do that. Now I need to go to my Pinterest board and I know I'm gonna do some like um, veggies and dip because I still have dip, so why not? This is for the Super Bowl. And did I say it was for the Super Bowl? I, will, I would like to do a charcuterie. One hard thing about charcuterie boards, which is why I haven't shown it really, it, I could do the veggie charcuterie, actually, um, and maybe a cheese charcuterie, I'll have to see, is um, a lot of times for our family, it just doesn't get eaten. Then there's the seven-layer dip. Ooh, why did I never do that one? Three fried beans, green onions, tomatoes, black olives, guacamole, taco seasoning, which I can make my own, cheese, and sour cream. Good deal. All right, I'm gonna do that because all I really need to get is tomatoes and I have cherry tomatoes I could use up and refried beans. So I'm gonna write that down so I know that's what I'm doing is the seven layer dip. Oh, I was gonna do deviled eggs too. That was another one I was thinking of. And I know I have the stuff for deviled eggs. Okay, that's good. I really have more in the house than I thought I did. Refried beans. I need 32 ounces, so I need two cans of whatever's cheapest. I'll do the fat-free store brand. And then what did I just say? Oh, black olives, sliced, because I'm lazy. So I think doing the veggies in dip, the seven-layer dip, um, the wings. Yeah, I'm going to do wings, which I showed you guys. Guacamole, um, deviled eggs, just because, goes with nothing. Oh, and the life-affirming nacho dip. I feel like that's plenty of food. And I'm going to need some Tostitos, which I put on the list. Okay, so now I just need to figure out the rest of the week. Okay, so now I need mozzarella. I am really coming to the end of myself when it comes to meal planning lately. I'm really struggling. So put in the comments, if you would, if you think of something, a budget-friendly meal. And I'm going to gather those ideas and I'm going to share them here as well. And also, if you're still with me and if you are patient enough to watch me making my grocery list, it says you probably are liking my content. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to subscribe. I would love for you to be part of this family, this positive family, our little home on YouTube, so that we can help each other through the good times and the bad and through the ups and the downs. The dishes are done that I did this morning. They've probably been done for a while now, truth be told. And so it is time to get that emptied so that I have a nice empty dishwasher when we have supper and everyone can just be putting their own dishes in the dishwasher after they eat. Also, just a little behind the scenes business of doing YouTube. I have some who love the sped up version of cleaning and it also allows me to show more in a shorter amount of time. And I have some who do not like it at all. I have some who, well, I had one person tell me I talk too much and I had one person tell me they prefer the voiceover and some people like a mix. So I'm trying to give all of you things that you enjoy and give a little bit of whatever you like within the same video. So I hope you understand everybody has their own tastes and I'm gonna do my best to give you a balance. It's so unnecessary dwelling
about the past Cause I know that God is good He led me to where I'm at Sometimes I feel like giving up or giving in But everything happens for a reason It won't always be blue skies ahead Sometimes you might This was my laundry. I had just kind of thrown it in a box with my fall shower curtain. Some of this just needed to be put away. Leo is still on my bed. <laughs> Crazy cat. I need to run to the store for avocados and to drop off uh, returnable bottles. Maybe penny counts. But first, let's so see. So get the trash donations to the car. So I did the Super Bowl plan, grocery order. I made the steak fajitas, did the dishes. Oh, I haven't gone room by room. Okay, I'm going to do that real quick. Just kind of check in with each room, see how things are going. The fall shower curtain needs to go to the basement. Maybe I'll do that first because that's quick. And then I will kind of visit rooms and see what needs to be cleaned. Kind of visit this room. There's the shower curtain. And that blue box is going to be for donation since I don't have a lid. When I finally took this fall curtain down like two days ago, I washed it and decided, well, if it survives the wash well, then it will go back up in the fall. So I'm getting it folded up and then I will put it with my fall decor in the basement. And we love having a little bit of cutesy seasonal decor. That was my sewing box. Thing I didn't declutter that I meant to declutter. I just wrote that. I need to get Since I'm going upstairs, I'm going to take that box with me, which is stuff for Goodwill. Oh, this is stuff I decluttered from the Christmas box. Yeah, that was a bit ago.
Even though I was intentionally trying to reset the house today, whenever I'm going to leave the house, I like to run around and just tidy it up as though company is on its way. Just go room to room, see whatever I can get set to rights within, say, 10 minutes. And that way, when I come home, it is just so much more relaxing to come home to a clean house. And even if it's not like, quote, clean, like not deep cleaned, maybe the floors need to be washed or something. Just not seeing piles of things everywhere is so much more encouraging than coming home to a messy, messy house. <laughs> Leo, no, <laughs> he's like chewing on flowers, or wants to. One of the blankets in the living room needed to be washed. It had some guacamole on it, it looked like. So I am just getting the laundry started before I leave for the grocery store. And then when I get back, I can just flip it over to the dryer and then ignore it once I start the dryer until tomorrow. For my last super productive <laughs> act of the day, and it's only 2.30, I've got the cans. I'm going to go to the store, get some avocados to go with dinner, drop off my bottles, and I'm going to come home. You know, it felt good to have the house reset. So I'll come home, put finishing touches on dinner, get my shower, and then just, I don't know, do a little editing, but relax. I hope I was able to encourage you as much as you encourage me by being here. Remember, as always, God loves you. I love you too. And I can't wait to see you next time, which hopefully will be tomorrow.